and thank you for taking time to watch this video. Now, if I told you they have 27,000 teeth, they only come out at night, and there are hundreds of them living in your garden, you'd probably think I'm talking about something from a horror movie. But I'm not. I'm talking about that slippery, slimy little creature that is considered to be the enemy of the gardener, and that is the slug. I'm Gang Gang. Welcome to the channel. Gang Gang and Peanut. Two peas in a pod. Now slugs in our gardens and on our allotments are often seen as a pest, but they play a crucial role in the ecosystem. In the UK there are approximately 40 varieties of slugs in our gardens and on our allotments. Now, out of the 40 or so species of slugs in the UK, there are only a handful that we need to really consider as a pest if we're trying to protect our crops. And among those are the grey field slug, the common garden slug, the killed slug, and more recently, the Spanish slug and the name suggests this is not a native slug of the UK, but it is now in the UK and it's becoming quite prolific. Now, when it comes to eating habits, slugs are primarily herbivores. They feed on a wide range of plants, including the leaves and fruits and vegetables. And while they can be detrimental to gardens, they also play an important role in breaking down organic matter and contributing to the soil health. Now, the majority of slugs are herbivores, primarily munching on decaying plant matter, leaves and fruits. And they have a unique feeding mechanism. They have a tongue-like structure called a radula, which is covered in up to 27,000 tiny teeth. And this radula acts a bit like a rasp, and it allows them to scrape the surface of the food they're eating and break it down into tiny particles. Slugs are gastropods and they're closely related to snails but without the protective shell and their life cycle begins with eggs laid in moist soil and the eggs hatch out into juvenile slugs and these young slugs grow very rapidly and reach maturity in just a few months. Slugs have a surprisingly short lifespan in the UK of about one to two years and this is dependent on their habitat and the environment around them and the predators that like to eat them. Now slugs are nocturnal creatures which means they come out at night time and if you want to see slugs this is probably the best time to look for them. They thrive in the damp and moist environments and that's why you can often find them after a rain shower. Did you know that slugs have a unique anatomy? They lack a hard shell, unlike the snail. And this allows them to squeeze into tight spaces, which is why you normally find them hidden in crevices, under rocks and under leaves. They have a protective layer of mucus that keeps them moist and helps them glide over the surfaces using a muscular foot to crawl, creating a wave-like motion that propels them forward and allows them to travel up to 20 meters in a single night. Now the mucus that the slugs use to move around is also used as a sat-nav navigation system. And it's said that slugs can find their way back home from up to 20 meters away. So if you're going to move slugs from your garden, move them more than 20 metres away, or there's a good chance they'll find their way back home. Now the slug has two pairs of tentacles. One pair of tentacles are the optical or the eyes of the slug. And whilst they're not actually eyes, they can differentiate between light and dark. The lower pair of tentacles on the slug are used for feeling and for tasting food. How many slugs can you find in an average garden or on an average allotment plot in the UK? 
Well, estimates suggest there can be anywhere from 20 to 200 slugs per square meter. Now, I hope that has enlightened you a little more on the slugs that live in your garden and on your allotment. And we need to remember that they are an important part of the ecosystem. They are indeed food for other animals and creatures that visit us in our garden and on our allotment. They are eaten by birds such as the blackbird and the thrush. They are eaten by frogs, toads, slow worms and hedgehogs. So as gardeners, we do have a responsibility to try not to just kill them off. Maybe we should look a bit more responsibly and try to prevent them eating our crops by using things such as barriers like slug collars, copper tape, eggshells and other such things that may or may not work. For me, the best thing to do is to go out at night time with a big bucket and a pair of gloves and pick them up, pop them in the bucket and move them somewhere else. Always remember him, take them more than 20 metres away because otherwise their sat nav system will bring them straight back. Anyway, I'm Gang Gang. Thank you very much for watching. And as ever, until next time, take care.